Hey guys, Brad from SimpleGuitar.com here with another video and thanks for coming back. This is going to be a lot of fun today. I'm going to show you how to use ties when you're strumming on the guitar. Now, when I started out playing guitar, I was learning different strum patterns and working on them and there were some really cool sounding ones that I struggled to get to sound as good as I thought they should. And the problem was I didn't know how to use a tie well. And this is something that I've seen lots and lots of students struggle with. So today we're going to break down ties with strumming patterns because you deserve to have awesome sounding strum patterns with ties in them so that you can feel like a rock star. So let's dive in. All right, so first of all, what is a tie? Well, a tie literally is tying two notes together. So in notation, it's gonna look like this, okay? You've got the first note, and then you've got the tie, which is that slurred line over the top, the, the, the arced line over the top, and that is how we show a tie in notation. Now, normally, what that means is you are going to play the first note and then hold it through the second note. That's it. That's as simple as a tie gets. Where it usually hangs us up is when ties happen somewhere and it's somewhere that we're used to playing and then we suddenly aren't playing there anymore. So here's an example of a tie. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do four strums. I'm gonna strum beat one and then beat two and I'm gonna tie beat two to beat three. And so I'm going to hold beat two through beat three and then I'm going to strum on four. So it'll go one, two, tied three, four. Okay, so that would sound like this. If I'm just playing a G chord, then I'm gonna go like this. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Right, so there I'm just tying the second note and the third beat together. That's it. I mean, really, it, it's basically the same thing as if right there, instead of playing two quarter notes, if I just played a half note. That's how it sounds. The biggest problem that people have with this is they tend to overthink it. So let's break it down even simpler and work on doing just this really, really simple. So we are going to build up to playing this strum pattern, which is the one that I always struggled with, but it is like the most common strum pattern ever. And you can play thousands of songs with it and hear it all over the place. And so we're gonna build up to playing this strum pattern. That's where we're gonna get to. But first, let's break it down. What we're gonna start with is we're gonna start with doing quarter notes, okay? We're gonna play four beats, four notes, and we're just gonna strum down on each of them. We're just gonna go one, two, three, four. 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 Pretty simple, right? Now, what we're gonna do is we are going to leave out beat number three. But here's the trick. You're still gonna be strumming down one, two, and for three, move your hand down, okay? This is going to help you keep your timing. If you go, if you hit the strings for one and for two, and then for three, you move your hand down, even if your pick doesn't hit the strings, and then you bring it back up and you go down again for four. So your hand is always going to be moving the same way in one, two, three, four on the beat, it always goes down. That's the trick. So that will sound like this. One, two, three, So that is how it sounds if we tie beat two and beat three together. So now let's go ahead and add in some upstrokes. The first upstroke we're gonna add is gonna be on the end of four. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, and 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 one. 
That's easy, right? Now let's add one more on the end of three. So we're going to go one, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and so I'm holding, I'm still tying two and three together, and then on and, I'm doing an upstroke, and then a downstroke on four, and then an upstroke on the other and. So it's gonna be down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. And it's important that we leave that space in there. So that will sound like this. One, two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and four, and down, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up. That's how it sounds now. So let's add one more upstroke. And this is where a lot of people will get thrown off. What we're gonna do is we are going to add an upstroke on the and of two. So we're going to have one, two, and, and then we're gonna tie that and together to beat three. And then we'll play again on and for and. So what we're doing here is we are going to be doing this. One, two, and, and four, and, and your hand needs to still move down on three so that we can keep the timing correct, but you're just not gonna hit the strings there. So that's it. And that is how we tie this note together. So it'll go like this. One, two, and, and four, and down, down, up, up, down, up, one, and, and four, and down, down, up, up, down, up, one, two, and, and four, and one, two, and, and four, and down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Now that is how you tie that note together. But here's the cool thing. You can do ties just about anywhere, but that is probably the most common strum pattern with a tie in it. And the good thing about it is once you get that down, that has a really cool feel when you're playing. And it'll make anything that you play really sound good and it'll make you sound like a pro, which is great. And so what we want to do here is we want to make sure that whenever you see a tie in music, that it, whenever it comes up, that you're good to go. And so let's do another example. What we're going to do here is I'm actually going to do another common tie. What we're going to do is we're going to tie the end of four to beat one of the next measure. So we're doing a tie between measures. What I'm going to do is I'm going to steal this strum pattern from a song that I really, really like. And the strum pattern is going to go one, three, and, and two, three, and four, and one, three, and, and two, three, and four, and one, three, and, and two, three, and four, and. So it's a two measure strum pattern. For the first measure, we're going one, three, and. All of that together is going to go one, and two, and three, and four. Are the only three things that I'm hitting. I'm hitting one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So it's a downstroke on one, it's a downstroke on three, and then it's an upstroke on the and of four. So it'll be one and two and three and four and. But then when we speed it up, it sounds like this. And then on the next measure, I'm tying the and to beat one. So I'm gonna let that upstroke that I played on and just ring out through beat one. And then I'm gonna do another upstroke on the and of one. And then I'm gonna do a downstroke on beat number two. And then on beat three and four, I'm just gonna do a down up, down up on each one. So it'll be three and four and. So the second measure, I'm gonna have this upstroke on the and of four that is being tied over. 
and then I'm going to have one and two, three and four and. One and two, three and four and. One and two, three and four and. So all together really slow, it's going to sound like this. One, two, three, four and. And two, three and four and. One and three and. And two, three and four and. One, three and. And two, three and four and. Now that is how you do a tie when you've got a tie between the last beat of one measure and the first beat of the next measure. And that is actually pretty common. You're going to hear that in a lot of different songs and a lot of different strum patterns. So if you need to go back and practice that, go ahead and do that. It is a cool song. It's a great strum pattern. And I hope that that helps you get that down. Now, a key thing to keep in mind is when you are doing these ties, you have to keep your hand moving the whole time. Okay. Now the trick is also don't like tap your guitar or something. I had a student do that one time where instead of keeping the hand moving during beat three, my student was tapping the guitar and that will throw you off because we want to keep this motion. Your right hand, your strumming hand is supposed to help you keep time with the strumming. And if you do something else, when it's supposed to be going down to help you keep time, it's going to throw off your strumming pattern. Everything's going to get off and it's going to sound bad. Because what we want to have happen is we want to have on beats one, two, three, four, you're doing a downstroke. And on the and in between, you're doing an upstroke. So on one and two and three and four and those are your upstrokes. And you always want that when you're doing eighth note strumming like this to be a downstroke on the beat and an upstroke on the offbeat. Now, one last tip for getting these down, and this will help you out with a lot of stuff, is if you're having trouble with the counting of going like one, two, three, and, and two, three, and four, and one, two, three, and, and two, three, and four, and, if that throws you off, there's a simpler way to do this, and it's a lot easier. What I suggest you do is you sing the strum pattern. This was a great tip that my buddy Daryl gave me, and it works like wonders. If you have a strum pattern that is a little bit more difficult like that, like one, three, and, and two, three, and four, and, counting can get a little bit difficult to keep it all straight in your brain. But what you can do is just sing the strum pattern. If you sing it, it makes it easier. So you can go da, 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 Da 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 dig a dig a da 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 dig a dig a da 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 dig a dig a right. If you just sing the strum pattern, that's something that you can do anytime. So you listen to the song, and you start singing the rhythm of whatever it is that they're playing. And you know da 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 dig a dig a da 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 dig a dig a. And this is the same thing that we did like when I played in jazz band in high school. Most of the time we didn't actually count the rhythm out. We just scattered. <laughs> you know, we just sang the rhythm like that. And that's what works because it's easier for your brain to translate the rhythm when you're singing it like that than it is to sit down and count and go one, three, and, and two, three, and four, and. I mean, if you can do that, that's awesome and it's great and it's very valuable and I think you should be able to do it. But... Go ahead and just sing it. Da, 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 dig it, dig it. Anytime you come up with a harder strum pattern, go ahead and try singing it and see if that helps you out, especially with these ties. So guys, that is how you use these ties in different strum patterns. You're just tying the first note to the second note. So you hold the first note out and then you keep your strumming hand moving to keep time. If you need to break it down, to as simple as possible, I recommend that you do that. But if you go back and you do what we did where we started with just quarter notes and then built up by adding upstrokes into the strum pattern, and you can repeat those parts, and that will give you the practice so that when you encounter these strum patterns that have ties in them, it's going to make it a whole lot easier for you because you need to get to the point to where you can play this just by listening to it. So go practice this strum pattern, have fun with it, work hard at it. And if you haven't already got it, you can go to simpleguitar.com slash top 
10. And there you can get my guide, the top 10 things to learn on guitar first. It's a free guide for you that I put together that has 10 things, about 17 pages of stuff of things that I like to teach beginners first to get them making real music and having fun right away. So go to simpleguitar.com slash top 10, download that guide for free, have fun with it, start being proud of your guitar playing and impressing everybody when you play, and I will catch you in the next video.